what is happening with the markets right now my name is ross and today we're gonna go and build our highest conviction the traders best asset i'm gonna drive you through the model how i analyze the market with all the headwinds and the tailwinds and with that complexity how we can quantify and deal with the things in much more calm concise and simple way with all that said it's wednesday and here on data dash ross and we go First of all, I recommend starting, as always, with the Forex calendar. And uh, let's go see what are the important red folder days we're going to have this week. First of all, obviously, something I am looking very, very precisely at. And for those who is not the first time on this video, you guys understand why this is so important to watch the unemployment rate, because that definitely defines which scenario we are able to take from here, stagflation or Goldilocks. And the markets hate stagflation. Why? Because that is the period of a prolonged money printing where inflation and stagnation come hand in hand. This is not healthy for the businesses. So if market will start fearing that Jerome Powell has been too late with the cuts, expecting economy to be strong, but it was actually not strong, the market would start to sell off rapidly. And I don't want us to be trapped into that. On the other side, next week, we are having the CPI and uh, print. It's going to come on Thursday, July 11. Core CPI, CPI months over months and CPI year over year with an updated unemployment claims. Those two days, please mark in your calendar and be vigilant because I am really concerned about oil. You've seen my last few videos. I highlighted where the oil is and how good we are doing, doing with our macro hedges, with our trades and OIH and USO that is amazing I've been printing but it's not healthy for the entire economy why it is not healthy not a big surprise because oil is ingrained into every cost side on majority of goods and services you are consuming if oil is becoming more expensive of course the logistics transportations and other costs becoming more expensive too and inflation the cpi the ppi's numbers are starting to print higher and that's gonna scare the market and it's gonna prevent fed from cutting further and on top of that if oil is getting higher and consumers are having less money to spend obviously the service part is also being affected significantly so we don't want oil to be high if we are here allocated in crypto, allocated in risk on assets. This is not something that we want, but this is also something we take from the market and we make money wherever the market gives with the five dimensional understanding of macro. So let's see how our trades are. I am starting with an oil chart here itself. We have two key levels, 84 and 87. And for everyone telling me we have a double top and we are going down, we're having double top and we're going down. I'm asking you guys, are you familiar with the concept of liquidity? So many people place their stop losses just above this level, just above this level, just above this level. So what resides here is a lot of liquidity. And there is no brainer for me that a market maker would tap the price once more up here, tap the price once again here to grab all of this liquidity, to kick out the shorters out of their late shorts and to trigger their stop losses to recap his position and if he wants to go more down that's going to happen only after those levels but my macro economical understanding is also pointing out to the fact that oil can keep going higher from here and trap and get those um drop shorts from those level so what it tells us simply the fact that one egg oil services etf is lagging behind and we're gonna recap that line that zone as well so i am still seeing a very high upside at least 10 percent over the next few weeks on one egg oil services for those wondering how would we trade that let's go into our telegram alert group very briefly that was our trade that was our entry at 308 dollars with the very tight stop loss and the take profit we're gonna experience it probably rather sooner than later i would expect us to recap that zone 
for everyone wondering how you can get access to the Telegram chat and alerts of mine. It's actually free for all the newsletter subscribers, which is like roughly, I think, $1 per day. I think, honestly, it's an amazing value. So I give all my macro uh in the group and... Um, yeah, you're welcome to join. Uh, I'm going to keep the link in the description down below. You need to subscribe to the newsletter. And honestly, um, in my opinion, what Nick is doing with the newsletter is also truly phenomenal because not that you are getting the webinar access, but you're also getting a very profound game plan that does not cover only crypto. It covers natural gas, it covers uranium, it covers psychedelics, it covers multiple other asset classes. So yeah, give it a try, even if it's for a month. Um, and then you are sending an email and we are adding you many to my telegram group where more frequent and intra week trades are taking place soon we're going to have a specially dedicated session for crypto scalping because i understand that's where you can actually increase your returns on the portfolio in a highest possible way simply just because the asset class is smaller and the markets are more volatile but that's also not for everyone and not for every risk profile so please keep in mind the capital protection and we'll speak more about that on friday friday is going to be my birthday so i'm not going to come with a live update but i'm going to come with a review of one of my favorite books that is very much related to the market psychology so please stay tuned now coming back to the charts both s p 500 and nasdaq are looking extremely strong here are pushing towards their all-time highs and already on pre-markets are flipping green and what does it tell me overall about the markets that i actually wanted to discuss today with you guys i am gonna project quickly uh, my simple excel sheet on how i would analyze the markets from here and you would see um, for me it's always the combination the confluence of mid term and the short term and in the mid term i see clearly we're above the 100 day moving average the direction that we have is clearly positive uh, for sure we are roughly um in my opinion, um, above 530, which is this line I have been outlining multiple times. As soon as we are above 530, this is bullish for S&P 500. The price action is extremely important too. Every time I'm emphasizing that price action signifies the reaction and the bullishness of the market, how market reacts on the bad news, how market reacts on the good news. Very often here on the bad news, we didn't even have a sell-off. We had a correction. Like I would not call it a correction. We had a technical 0.5% um basically absor absorptions of those shorts that are piling on those news and the market absorbs them very well and keep going sideways just to burn that overbought overbought rsi to recap it slightly down and continue higher recap it slightly down and continue higher so this is extremely bullish price action that um, basically absorbs all the bad news for me if i could i would give there even two points but i also try to you know not be too emotional on any of my models and i understand nothing is ideal and some things wait more some things wait less but i also want to keep things simple and not introduce the uh, the percentage for the weights so coming back to the spreadsheet right now we are constantly printing new highs the earnings per share uh, are an expansion territory so I, th I i highlighted in one of my videos um the eps are normally having two types of cycles we are normally um contracting it means the entire market is feeling that there will be more uh, macro headwinds and it starts um basically reprice the earnings per share for the major stocks going towards 25, 24 down. Right now, we're in expansion territory. And it's also, of course, um, very much driven by the idea that the Fed would start to cut. And one second here, when I go to this Wall Street Journal article of yesterday, um, it actually gives me quite a positive outlook. If it happens that the CPI print comes all right, then Powell, as he mentioned, indirectly yesterday he would need a bit more long, long longitudinal data let's say three data points and then he is actually able to conduct the cut and that is aligned to our expected september cut so that september cut for sure will give a breather to the markets will give a breather to eps estimation and this is why i am allocating there number one a positive calculation goldilocks and stagflation guys this is not so clear to me right now because as we discussed just five minutes ago unemployment claims i need to see how this data evolves no one knows honestly uh, no one knows how economy would sustain itself i see that fed is doing a lot of tricks honestly if you ask me it doesn't look as healthy as it looks right now in my model on the paper but i also understand there is a like, bunch of financial engineering happening on the background for example if i'm gonna look and um 
dive into the regional bank index or CRE, you would see that Fed is trying their best from this moment where you remember how many bad news we had on uh, smaller bank collapses to pump more and more liquidity into this market. So how healthy is this breakout going to be uh, and how organic and how natural is that? We don't know, but I know for sure that Fed is doing their best towards November elections to, of course, keep the status quo. No one wants to have any more of those discussions and they will do whatever is needed to just provide the liquidity um, where there is a potentiality for any unrest to take place. Fed versus economy, uh, that's a tricky point, right? Because Jerome Powell honestly is slightly hawkish, but like between his lines, you start seeing that he's also more and more like the momentum, the acceleration is bringing him a little bit more dovish because he like recognizes right now that cuts can take place. He just wants to have a little bit more data, right? And this is all, of course, in the scenario that um, we get a nice CPI prints and the oil is not affecting them that much, which is also possible. And so here we can also go and uh, have minus one at some point, right? That's why I highlighted it in gray. Now, when it comes to quantity tightening, when it comes to bonds, to explain you my logic here, let's go quickly into the charts and we see TLT, which is the 20 year treasury bond ETF. So it actually highlights and is related to the price of the bonds, which are inversely related to the interest rate that those bonds are generating. And if Fed is gonna cut, obviously that the market is going to readjust and the prices are gonna go higher to those period where we were before with the low interest rate, right? So I'm expecting some 10, 15, 20% move if cuts would be started to get priced in by the market. And also simply technically looking at how that uh, line is holding, I still see that we are in an uptrend. Maybe this is like the beginning of the recovery for the bonds as soon as we are above this low. So what does it mean in simple words? It means if investors are starting to put more of their money into bonds, obviously they're taking those money from the stocks because on top of being able to receive almost 4% dividend payout per year, you're also able to make 10, 15, sometimes 20% just out of the repricing of those bonds. So that's a very good deal and this is a very safe deal. So a lot of investors are thinking why I would get 20% with so much risk if I can get something like that just being allocated to bonds where this payout on top of everything is guaranteed by the US Treasury. So that's obviously is negative for the stock prices. And here in Telegram group this morning, I also outlined my bond play. I roughly have around 180,000 position that I got assigned where put option, cash secured put assignment. So obviously uh, my cost of ownership is not that high. As you can see on the screen, it's not like 96. I collected a lot of premiums for that. Um, so roughly, I guess I'm at around 91 or $92. A little, little bit below where we are right now, but this is the play I would consider you to do if actually you are having the large portfolio and you also want to protect your capital and protection is very important. More about that on Friday, but uh, TLT here I love and I guess a lot of macro traders and macro uh, investors, hedge funds, institutions are loving it too. And obviously that's going to put more pressure on the markets. Coming back, obviously geopolitics is not in our favor right now. Um, I mentioned multiple times what we're having right now in the Middle East, plus uh, Syria and Iran, plus Taiwan and China, plus Russia and Ukraine, and so on and so forth. The list can go on and on. That is not really healthy for the market. And on top of that, the sentiment, the sentiment is quite bullish. And this I really don't like because when everyone is on one side of the trade, the trade becomes exuberant and market loves to wash out those exuberant late longers, the people who are constantly trading the breakout of the new all-time high, the drawing the cup and handle and then getting long. So at some point, of course, there will be a huge flash, maybe on some geopolitical news and those long, late, long, vulnerable longs vulnerable because their stop loss is just uh, very nearby. They entered late, so it's harder for them to be in profit. They start getting underwater, and as soon as they're getting underwater, they're closing their positions, causing the market to go even more down, right? You understand how it works, this like domino effect, this cascades. So yeah, when market is exuberant, I personally don't like it. 
Same applies to metals, same applies to um, commodities, uranium, but, uh, you know, tech is definitely in much, much more bubbly territory where so much of growth have been driven by one particular stock, um, which is NVIDIA, you know, that we discussed it last time. <laughs> there is like 20 plus percent of the um, S&P 500 return was just like, driven by NVIDIA. So, yeah. For sure, as I said, there is um, multiple forces driving the market, but I prefer uh, I prefer hated things. I outlined it multiple times. I prefer the companies with priced earnings of two, not of thirty-five. I prefer the sectors that are not in not in Financial Times, not in Wall Street journals. I, I don't want to be um, in the asset which is recommended on CNBC clearly, right? And this is what all we see around the hype around tech, the hype around NASDAQ, yeah, so this is like a negative, very negative actually point for me, I would also give it here minus two, but I stick to a bit of a simpler model, so anyway, midterm, we are aligned, that's super important, so we get two, we get a bull, we get a bull rating, right, and what about short term, uh, it's much more simple, it's just a like very technical, and short term, I always look on an, a NASDAQ, I highlighted this several times, S&P 500 is a bit of a more long directional indicator for me, NASDAQ is more volatile, it's smaller, so it actually reacts much more um, quicker. And that's why I see short-term things based on NASDAQ. So the direction is positive uh, monthly, the weekly direction is positive. The price action is also very positive. Um, I think, you know, today we're gonna get a good day. So I am not expecting um, like, at this level of RSI, I'm not expecting like a crazy Friday. I remind you all like uh, Thursday is going to be the 4th of July. So markets are going to be closed. And also Friday in this case is like a bridge day and people, a lot of, um, you know, Wall Street people are taking that day off. I'm not expecting like a bullish continuation on Friday. So I give it here a zero and seasonality wise, um, it's also rather zero. Um, you know, normally we, well, we have the saying about sell, say, sell in May and go away. So May would go like, let's say it's minus one. The Christmas season would go for me with plus one. Yeah. But here right now we are in the middle of the summer. I'm not expecting like a huge drastic moves. And here, this is the reason why we get zero two. So overall short term, we are at plus three and it's very simple. Short term is bullish. Mid term is bullish. I am still expecting the bigger market to stay in that bullish mode unless something breaks with unemployment claims. So I just give you a simple methodology. You don't have to, to follow my methodology, but I really recommend it to have a peace of mind, write it down on a piece of paper on the Excel spreadsheet, you can copycat mine and um, start your day with that because this is, of course, driving also your directions in the smaller markets, in the Bitcoin markets, in the altcoin markets. You know, if tax starts to sell off, there is no way that um, the smaller asset classes, for example, like blockchain and crypto would survive against everything. They would start to sell off too. So always start with a bigger thing and then zoom in into the smaller asset classes. It's very important. And I'm here, guys, to teach you macro and I'm here to help you connect various asset classes into the bigger picture to make more informed, more smart, more aware decisions. Let's have the quick outlook across several asset classes. I think weeks in, in the territory where you can actually start to hedge the tiny bit buying the VIX calls short term. So they're not going to be expensive, expecting maybe uh, that um, put to call ratio to go slightly um, above. It's too many calls in the markets right now, making it risky, market an all time high. I was telling you guys since this we lost this $26 line that Wall Street is bearish on Bitcoin, so not a surprise for me where we are right now. Um, looking right now on uranium physical, I, it actually might be a bottom if we consolidate and hold this line. So uranium, physical uranium is actually going to be my very big bet. I think <clears throat> that A, B, C correction is done and we're going to have the huge wave towards 30s. My big, big bet, I just need to start scaling in. Once again, I don't want to um, have all the position open. We'll do it in the group. We'll scale in pieces. Um, what else? What is else interesting here? Ethereum, Bitcoin, I think would come to retest this line for sure. So not really in rush. As I said, Ethereum around 3,100 is the good bet. It's what I'm going to do. Uh, Bitcoin dominance, um, quite tricky. I think we can just observe this 
I'm quite bearish in golf in red and we can have a little bit more fun on alts if Bitcoin of course is not losing the 60 level uh, then it's a psychological range break right and this I don't want I don't want those things to stay here it's all about the amount of time we're gonna stay here if you're gonna stay here for a day or two then definitely it's not gonna be fun it's all about momentum and Bitcoin is the commodity on steroids. So keep the momentum in place when you are charting BTC. For everyone wondering how is this altcoin correction they can take benefit, I'm showing it to you how I'm doing. So this is, for example, my Bybit account. It is connected directly to the Teal Street. Everything is free. You just need to spend five minutes integrating it via API. So for example, here you see Ethereum USDT. First of all, Bybit has no issues with trading USDT. This is my wallet, roughly half a million I put in this account. I quite trust that exchange, I would say, with that amount sitting there, right? I um, create briefly those cascaded scale orders. Here in Ethereum, you already see um, the levels of interest where I would be uh, interested to add more exposure levels after this huge correction. And I would, of course, analyze it first on daily, on, on four hourly, and I would say, okay, I have those two swipes and maybe we're gonna swipe the liquidity here. So I'd like to scale in between 3.7 and 3.9 with 50,000 USDT that are gonna be split between 50 order, uh, 20, apologize, orders. Bum, and that creates it to me automatically. I submit and I have those positions on Filecoin. So if I gonna have a um, stinky bid, as I call them, it's gonna be filled. And of course, I also recommend you then monitoring those positions, putting the stop losses, but you can split it in with a higher range. So your, your, um, your average entry would be significantly better, even if the price goes down so much. Please don't do that on leverage. Please consider it as the one X. Yeah. I don't want anyone of course to be burned out of that, but if you, for example, scale, um, into those trades below the so-called SFPs or swing failure patterns. When everyone starts to think we are losing the range, that's actually where you add. And then the range is reclaimed and you're in a good place, but your entry is so much better that if you just come and buy it on the market. And that's what provides you an opportunity to always exit this trade at break even instead of having the stop loss hit and then rescale again and rescale again. And that's how you can also master uh, better entries and be so much more at peace with that. I will speak about those more on Friday. Be so much more uh, in the mindful state that you are not shaking out of your trade and every five minute candle because you think, damn, otherwise my stop loss is going to hit. You're actually in profit. It gives you so much more advantage against other market participants. That's very important to have a precise entries, not just because of money, but just because of psychology. And for everyone who wants to, to trade, I'm going to link down the um, Bybit uh, referral link of mine. We had a partnership with them. So they are giving you 500 USDT trade for free. There was one user last time who for some reason didn't receive. So I reached out to affiliate manager. He received a separate email. So that's a leverage trade um, that you basically get for free. And then if you make some profits on those, uh, all you need to do, I think, is to do the KYC level one and to deposit 100 euro on an exchange. So yeah, it's not like much that you can lose, but I recommend you to uh, actually start, as I said, building your track record and building your trade journal based on your emotions, based on your aspirations. Just see how accurate you are, because in these smaller trades, the market accuracy would give you the higher conviction for the big asset class allocations like uranium, like silver. You would feel much more confident starting from that small exercises, right? And there you cannot lose more than 100 bucks. So that's fine to build your conviction with 100 bucks to then uh, actually work on your retirement portfolio. That's actually how I... Uh, um, would wish I would recommend doing that instead of going all in into the markets, into the <laughs> bull run and then like suffering for a bear market. It's much better to low, uh, learn, learn trading gradually step by step. I had a lot of questions, obviously, on silver. Um, silver, I think, 3% <laughs> today up. And that's the reason why I was telling you guys, you know, of course, we can we can draw whatever here, <laughs> but I was outlining you uh, that the worst, 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 worst case scenario, in my opinion, is the level of 20, 26. Uh, we spoke about the level of 28, but I was always highlighting that for those 20 cents uh, minimization um, of improvement of, you know, of improvement of your entry, you can definitely miss out the huge um, expansion that's going to take place in the silver price and multiple times I outline in my telegram group. Let's see, what did I say? 
I said on June the 11th, look what I said, that my preferred target is silver, and the bottom in silver remains 28.5. And here we are. I'm not trying to, you know, overpraise myself, but here we are bottoming around 28.5, accurate to a cent, at which date? 27th of June. If there is anyone more accurate observing all those markets and having the lines in place, please let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to be the friend with that guy. Uh, but um, yeah, jokes apart, I think that SILG miners and especially SILG to silver ratio. Look at this pre-open. We're going to pre-open here. We just kicked out all the disbelievers, all the people who want to get out of their positions because they get scared. All right. If you're scared, we're going to go up without you. That's fine. And uh, market cannot accommodate everyone. And that's why it's it's called market. It's all about buyers and sellers. So someone needs to sell, uh, someone needs to buy. I like SoFi here. Honestly, a huge position and a couple of my accounts. My SoFi position is probably one of the biggest. I'm not telling you for sure to go big here. It's just I particularly like the stock. I think the SoFi move, when it would start, it will be very much alike to Robinhood. I've been long Robinhood since $8 level. I made around 180% with Robinhood in a few months' time. I am very sure SoFi is going to do something similar and give me those nice six digit gain on this one particular position very much looking forward tesla guys i think also you are making yourself a huge disservice if you are not following like my free alert group let's just go and see what happened in tesla and when i was giving that signal i gave you the tesla trade on june the 14th where we were at 179 and here we are right now from 179 we moved all the way in pre-market 30% on such a mega cap in just a matter of two weeks, right? Something like, something like 13 bars. <laughs> yeah, exactly two weeks. So with all that said, um, yeah, I would love to, of course, keep the group available for everyone, but it's also, I, for now, to understand also what people need, what people ask me, I read every single message, I try to reply them all. So um, I believe like the group right now is close to be at capacity. We would not, of course, close the group as some people understood last week. I don't intend to close anything, but we would cap it to a certain number of users just simply because I cannot afford reading the messages from 5,000 people. And I think it's also normal to accommodate into my signals what people actually do want. And as you notice, you know, we have a certain big convictions that we observe. These big convictions are uranium. This big conviction is oil. This very, very big conviction is silver. So we also cannot cover like every asset class on earth because that like you majority of people especially if they're not full-time traders like me they cannot observe 120 positions open you know they need to stick maybe to like 10 12 15 positions right in their portfolio so it's also adequate that we are keeping um the things a little bit more concentrated here with the number of questions with a number of users with a number of asset classes with a number of high conviction plays and then everything else that would come in the scalping world then we don't care we can really trade anything out of this market but those we'll do a bit later and i will be very happy uh, to have uh, yeah uh, nice 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 uh, progressions and nice portfolios here we're going to do a few challenges uh maybe taking account from 10,000 to 100,000 and we're going to do more of fun things like that you know playing on leverage but for now we are more focused on the macro outlook and the capital protection and those big fundamental plays with all that said, guys, I wish you all an amazing continuation of the week. I wish you all um, a beautiful time and great success in the markets. And with all that said, I see you soon. Bye.